Now, I don't know if this is crazy or genius, but I've come up with the best little hack. Hi guys, I have been in two minds as to whether or not I should even record this video today because the weather has been absolutely foul. If you're watching this today or tomorrow, you'll know the wind has been crazy, uh, but we've got a few moments of sunshine. So I'll start out here and then I will take you inside. It is spring, spring's here. It is my favorite time of the year and the most exciting time in the garden. So what's in store in this video today? It's gonna to be jam-packed. First, I'm gonna take you around what's growing outside here, assuming that this blue sky now, it was hailing a second ago, uh, assuming the blue sky stays. I'll show you what's growing out here. I will then take you inside where I have an extraordinary number of seedlings growing and virtually every single thing under the sun I have growing because I'm gonna be selling them in a few weeks time for a kinder fundraiser. And then finally, I know a lot of you have been asking to see more of Nona and Pa's garden. I was there just yesterday, so I took a quick video showing exactly what they are growing. Now included in all that, I'm gonna give you some tips for what you can be planting right now. It is the month of September. It is the beginning of spring. <sighs> We've had some weird weather. Before I get started, if you're new to this channel, you may not realize we do garden tours every single month here in Melbourne, Australia. If you wanna follow along, hit the subscribe button now. Also hitting like, this helps other people find this video and I would be very grateful. A couple of other new things we've got going on at the moment. I've set up an email distribution list. A lot of people were wanting to know exactly when I'd be uploading my garden tours and I can't be particularly consistent at the moment just because I've got too much going on. So I'm gonna do a drop down link either there or there. If you see that, click on it, add your email address and that way I can just flick you a note when the latest tour has been uploaded. So given that we are here, let's start here. I'm gonna take you over here to show you some of my lettuces. There aren't a huge amount left because we've been harvesting them and really enjoying them. I have just started enjoying this sorrel and I'm actually looking now and seeing quite a few holes here. So I'm wondering if the white cabbage butterflies are getting into them, no I can't. Yes, there you go, there's a tell. Oh gosh, they're so, they're so hidden. Can you see that there? That is a baby caterpillar, the cabbage white moths or butterflies. They're technically butterflies. The farmers call them moths because they're pests. They lay eggs, tiny little eggs, which I reckon I'll find some in a minute. They turn into caterpillars. So we've obviously had a warm day recently and they've been laid. I'll flick you off. And I'm gonna go through here really carefully. There's another little one just there. I don't know if you can see it just there. I'm going to go through here really carefully once I've finished filming and just physically remove all of those. There's some aphids in there too. So I've had all this area netted, uh, which has been good because I haven't had the caterpillars and the moths until recently. It's also been a bit too cold for them. But the bad thing is some of those other beneficial bugs can't get in, like your ladybirds. And so I have actually had a lot more aphids on my lettuces than I usually do. That's partly why I took the netting off to let them clear out. Over here, these are really interesting. You might remember from my last video, these were completely ruined, eaten by pests. I might have finally got rid of the rats, touch wood at least temporarily because they haven't been eating these recently and that's growing back. So they're all brand new leaves. I don't know if that'll turn into a proper cabbage, but we'll see. This one as well, this is a little purple broccoli, which is starting to flower. It's tiny, but that was that was demolished. That was cut right back to here. And, um, and it's regrowing. So don't give up on things if they get eaten by pests. Celery is still doing nicely. You can now barely tell which one was the old one that I chopped off at the base and which is the new one. So this was put in as a seedling. This was an old one that I chopped off and the whole thing has re regrown. So when you harvest your celery, I've said this before, keep it in there. Some little lettuces I've popped in here too. The garlics are still looking really nice. I'm really excited that we might get a good harvest there. I remember last year being told that October was a good time to harvest. Is there much of a bulb there? No. Nah. They've still got a lot more growing to go before they turn into actual garlics. I don't know if it'll be October or something else. My carrots are interesting. These all got eaten too, but they're just growing back now that I seem to have got rid of the rats. 
and I've sprinkled some carrot seeds over there which haven't sprouted yet but this is a berry plant I bought it last year I knew it wasn't going to fruit in the first year so I completely neglected it I fed it a bit and watered it a bit but otherwise I just kind of let it run wild and this year it should produce fruit thornless blackberries I think that one is and there's another berry plant over here which I'm quite excited about because it's you can see a lot of these green leaves have started to start to grow again because we've obviously had some warmer weather here this is a really prickly one I think that might be possibly raspberry but I, I've lost the signage so um, I've got a friend from kindy and school who is a berry they're the king and queen of berries and I hope one day they'll let me do a tour of their garden because I've been getting tips from them they've got the most amazing berry patch uh, they seem to think that if the stems are as thick as about a pen then they should be quite there's my hand for reference they should be uh, pretty healthy so this will be a big experiment but I would be so excited if we got berries off those this is a capsicum plant from last year two more capsicum and peppers <laughs> I've lost all the labels that label says purple carrot clearly not purple carrot so there'll be lots of surprises here but check this out if we go up close and focus there's all this new growth happening here so I'm quietly optimistic that these might start producing again we'll see what else is happening up here oh yeah this is another one this was my chili plant that was produced a crazy amount of chilies harvested all of those cut the whole lot back and again look at all that new growth in there that is just wanting to start developing again which is quite exciting Got my food cubes over here I've decided to net up the food cubes because they were all getting eaten too and since I popped the netting on they're doing much better start over here with my rainbow chard that is probably ready to harvest but you can harvest that and it'll keep on growing I've got some flower seeds down there that haven't sprouted yet I'm gonna I've used clothes pegs to keep this netting on you can buy official netting from food cube and it's much much better but our budget is a little bit restricted at the moment so we're using the cheap version which is pegs from the clothesline this is um, like irrigation tubing and it's working nicely for now you can hear that wind really picking up so fresh lettuces that I popped in at the back there is that coriander or parsley I think that's coriander that got all eaten back but now that I've netted it up it seems to be growing back peas here this is like my fourth attempt at peas um, spring onions radicchio parsley I think and over this side I've got a whole lot more lettuces 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 spring onion and more celery hmm can I show you in there there you go is that gonna focus there you go more celery the other nice thing about these nets is it started hailing earlier and I panicked a little bit but that's perfect protection from the hail over here this is what happens when you don't net things these are all just destroyed I should have probably netted this too oh well you win some you lose some I had to press pause on filming out here for a bit because the wind was crazy and it's just firing up again now as we speak if you've had any sort of damage at your house from the wind please let me know because I know there's been some really significant damage around the state I hope everyone is okay so I'm going to push through and finish off this outdoor area and then I can take you inside I had to bring these inside when the hail started but I uh, brought them back outside so these are some corn seedlings that I've planted from seed um, glass gem corns they're supposed to they're those really colorful ones which I'm kind of excited about I haven't grown corn before and they're normal yellow sweet corny type of things uh, and golden zucchinis why did I bring those out and not the others I think that was just an experiment to see if I could sort of slow down their growth by bringing them outside they are not as leggy as my zucchinis upstairs they're also probably not quite as big so it has successfully slowed them down so let's take a look under at the veggie pod 
I've pulled out a lot of what was here and now just got some fresh lettuces in there and some leek growing at the back. My parsley and coriander got eaten right back and now they're regrowing again. So you might remember last time I showed you the mice or rats had eaten a hole through my cover. I've patched it up like that and that seems to be working for now. Down here I had a lemon tree, it's still a lemon tree kind of, which was really covered in gall wasp nodes, if that's even what they're called. It's not that interesting so I won't dwell on that, but I've, wow, oh my goodness. There's a really big tree overhead and I'm actually uh, gonna stop filming for now because that tree can get a bit dangerous. All right, so just quickly the last thing I'm gonna show you, we have a new, lemon tree that's gone in there which I'm really excited about. I have netted it partly for the possums, partly for the wasps. There's some holes there but hopefully that'll be fine. And let's go inside. All right, I've taken you upstairs now to show you my seedlings. 95% of these are gonna be sold to make money for our kindy. So uh, I am, yes, a little bit crazy but not completely crazy. I also recognize there's some weird reflections on the camera. That's because I've cracked my phone screen. I film on my phone, it dropped. Uh, so I need to get that fixed. I haven't fixed it yet. So in the meantime, I'm very sorry. It's just gonna look a little bit fuzzy. So I had moved a lot of these outside, but because of all that crazy wind we've been having, I've brought, brought them all in here because they were just gonna get blown around outside. But I'm really excited how everything is going. Virtually everything is sprouted so far, except these. Now I can't work out if I didn't plant them, if I stuck a label in before actually putting the seeds in or if they've been dud seeds. I'm guessing probably dud seeds. I don't always keep my seeds particularly well. And these lettuces here were older seeds and you can see they also haven't had a particularly good germination rate. Whereas if you look at some of the other things that were planted from fresh seeds, they have a much better germination rate. And I think that tells me I've got to pay a lot more attention to how I store my seeds. They're supposed to be stored in a cold, dark area. However, I just, I sometimes, I've kept some of mine up here, to be honest, which gets really hot. So that's stupid. So let's have a look how these are going. What have we got here? Lebanese cucumbers. Those ones, you can see the true leaves have come through there. This looks like a bigger one. What's this? The zucchini. So the zucchini is, yeah, look how big my hand is and how big the leaves are. They're getting really big. Uh, I think most of these are a combination of cucumbers and zucchinis. Over here, early cascade tomatoes growing in there. They're reaching a point where I nearly need to transplant them. They have their first one. Yep, one set of true leaves in there. Uh, again, a bit of leek. I think I showed you in one of my seedling updates. I just chopped the end off that for a separate video that I'm making um, just to show you how you can regrow certain foods. Same with the lettuce there. Uh, okay. So in my last seedling update, my parsley hadn't germinated yet. That was clearly just a slow grower because they've now had a really good germination rate. Only the first little leaves through there. On the other side, coriander are starting to get their first true leaves in the middle. My watermelons here, I'm trying really hard not to pull off those seeds because when I sometimes, no, <laughs> can't follow my own advice. What I was gonna say, I pulled some of those seeds off too early off some of the other plants and I broke the leaves. So I probably shouldn't have done that, but that was a bit impulsive. There you go. Basil down here, really slow growing, but it usually is. Also getting their first little set of true leaves in there. What's this one? Uh, another Lebanese cucumber. Lettuces and is that more parsley? Should go around the other side. Yep. Parsley here again, slow to sprout, but all of them have since sprouted. Uh, so that was obviously just a timing thing. I was a bit impatient. This one here, I'm going to take you around the other side in a minute and try and remember what all those are. So 
watermelon starting to get their first little bit of true leaves. These are capsicums. Slow to get started, but now they are getting started. I'm going to press pause and take you over the other side. Beetroot growing in there didn't have as great a germination rate. They were older beetroot seeds too. We're going to have to get a lot better at that. More tomatoes in here. These are crowded. Which ones are these? Sugar lump tomatoes. I can see in there a bunch of them. In there you can see there's like a whole lot of seeds that somehow ended up together. I really should have transplanted those already. I will transplant those in the next couple of days before those roots get too tangled. They might already be a bit tangled and I'll record a video on how to transplant tomato seedlings too. Pumpkins here. You can see pumpkins, zucchini and cucumbers all look so similar that I really have to check the labels otherwise they don't know what they are. These are more tomatoes. These are black Russian tomatoes. They're a little bit less crowded, so I can probably leave these in here for a bit longer before I have to transplant them. More watermelon, 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 I think. And what's this one? I think baby mini cucumbers. Uh, interestingly, these two are growing so much slower than these ones. Possibly I haven't put enough water in there or something. Who knows? This is dill. You can see Dill's getting those really distinct leaves coming through. And in this tray here, which I promised, what have we got? Fennel, same again, the distinct fennel leaves that look a lot like Dill are coming through. Spinach, again, those little spinachy leaves that actually look like spinach. Cos lettuce and beetroot. Now this is exciting. This is the heirloom planter that Gatherer sent me. I stuck three little tomato seeds in there and once they're a little bit bigger, I am going to ditch the two weakest ones and just keep the strongest one. And that should grow to its entirety in here without any soil. I'm actually going to keep it in this room, especially now that I have got a grow light there. Um, and I'm really excited. I've got three others, one over there that has just started to peek through and two others that haven't germinated yet. So this is the other one, which I think is also a tomato sprout. Now, I don't know if this is crazy or genius, but I've come up with the best little hack. You know those annoying little flies that buzz around your plants when you bring them inside? You just vacuum them up. I'm going to take you over to Rod and Mary, aka Nonna and Pa's garden now, and it was just as windy there as it was at our house. The broccolini here, purple broccolini, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but these are delicious. We had them tonight. I turned them into a pesto with a whole lot of garlic, pecorino cheese, basil, walnuts, salt and olive oil. Mm, yum. The rest of their garden's looking glorious. They've got cabbages there, silver beet, rocket bunch of other little lettuces. I can see some radicchio in there. Even their strawberries are starting to look really good. They've slowly been growing over the winter and as the weather warms up they might start to get their first little bit of fruit. This is the basil I used to make that pesto that I mentioned. You can see there's not much basil left but that was full of basil in there. This is my this is my eco kitchen from Gatherer uh, and you can see here I've also got snow peas. So this was a total experiment. I'm, oh yeah, I've got my first flower. I'm not aware of people growing peas hydroponically. I'm sure they probably do, but I just put them in there as an experiment to see if that would work. And until now, I haven't had any flowers. They've grown long and strong, but I can see I've got my first flower there. So that would be really cool. The one way to guarantee that they won't get eaten is to bring them inside. So that's cool. I'm excited about that. Hiding down here, I've got a passion fruit plant, which I bought from the nursery. And I'm leaving it inside until that weather settles a bit. It's getting some natural light from the artificial sun from the eco kitchen. 
Before I sign off, the Bureau of Meteorology has just released their long range weather forecast for spring. Here in Victoria and across most of Australia, we're looking at warmer than average temperatures for spring. That's great news for me because if you've been watching my previous videos, you'll know I've sown some of my seeds a bit too early and it means they might do fine in the garden with warmer temperatures. I saw in the week ahead, there's a 26 degree day coming up but it's also freezing today, so that's all just confusing. But it does mean if you're planning out when's gonna be the last frost date, it might be slightly earlier this year than it usually would be. And I don't wanna jinx anything because these are all just probabilities, but you might have success getting some of your spring and summer veg in your garden outside a little bit earlier this year than you usually would.